Hey everybody, it's Joe, the 3D Printing Professor, and if you get this message, send a haircut quickly. I'm getting desperate. Actually, I'm kind of getting used to it. kind of like it. Well, we'll see what happens going forward. But, I was doing some 3D modeling this morning, and I made this, I think, really cool looking brick. And I used a technique to put a texture on the side of the brick like that and on the top that's all done procedurally in Blender. Now, if you are modeling for the render, that is to say if all you care about is what's going to appear on the screen, this technique is super easy to do. All you have to do is take your model, put a displacement map on there, and Blender works it all out, no problem. But if you're doing this for 3D printing, then the geometry is all that matters. It has to be in the geometry. And I wanna show you the technique that I use for doing that that can be applied to a lot of different things. So let's go check that out real fast in Blender. So right here is my brick model. And you can see it's it's really smooth and there's nothing, nothing to it. It's very simple, not fancy at all. But uh, if we go into edit mode, you'll see that the, the pattern for it is very simple. In fact, I've already got uh, bevel modifier on here so I'll turn that off the sides are flat the top though has got some some interesting geometry it's clean geometry it, it makes it so that we can get the curves on the side but if I were to take this as it is and add a displacement map to it it can only displace where there's vertices to displace so it'll only be able to move up and down in these locations these entire sides will remain flat and that's not at all what we want here let me show you real fast displacement modifier right here and then we'll just uh do i have a cloud texture that i can put on here i've i've got some speckles here look at this this is all that it does it can't create displacement where there's not geometry so one solution is i jump into edit mode and i loop cut on the sides and i add a bunch of geometry here well, that works for here, but what happens when I go this way? Well, I can only do like that, and then it gets kind of wonky when it gets near the middle. This isn't going to work. There's a better idea for all of these, and let me just undo that right there. There's a better idea here. Let's get rid of that displace modifier, and let's first add a remesh modifier. Now, the remesh modifier is really cool, and if we go into wireframe mode, we can see what it's done is it's taken the mod it's taken the mesh and it's added points all over and then it's tried to blend those points where the existing geometry is now the result of this is that these corners and edges here stop being the smooth perfect geometry that we're used to and they kind of become a little bit jaggy it's worse if we use uh some of the settings on the remesh modifier if we go to blocks it just turns it to like minecraft if this model had more shape you'd be able to see what i was talking about and i've seen this used to make like faux legos which is super cool if we do smooth, it well remeshes, and then it tries to mesh smooth it. I don't like this one as much. I could just as well do voxel and then a mesh smooth modifier and control it a bit more. And then there's sharp, which attempts to kind of gridify the mesh, but at the same time keep it as close as possible to the original. And I don't know why, but it doesn't really like it when points get close together like that. So voxel is the one that we want right now. And we can change the voxel size. If we do one millimeter voxels, we can see it get even chunkier, but it still works. Or we can do uh, 0.5 and it's less chunky and still has a, I'm gonna leave it at 0.1. We're gonna have a nice high mesh here, and then we'll use decimate afterward. But notice that this is just sitting on the stack. So we've got the bevel before it. We could just as well turn off the bevel modifier there. Well, I turn it on actually, and now it's a part of our remesh. In fact, I'm gonna modify the bevel modifier. I think I only want this to be like 0.25 beveled on the sides. I don't want it to be super bevelly. This is going to print very small, so that bevel modifier probably isn't even going to be seen, but it's for me, now that we've got a mesh with a lot of points in it, we can really easily 
add a displace modifier on here. We can create a new texture. I'm going to go over to the textures here and I'm going to change it to a Musgrave texture because Musgrave is a, is a really good one. It has a lot of flat surfaces and then pock marks in it. And that's almost exactly what I want here. But I need to turn up the size to maybe one, maybe 1 1.5. No, one is enough. Maybe a little bit smaller, 0 0.8. We'll see about that. And you just play with the settings. At this point, I'm going to go back and make my the strength on my modifier only about like 0.4 because this is 3d printing and a 0.4 millimeter nozzle is what we want although what's my scale here yeah my scale is one so if my scale is one then a 0.4 in the strength is a 0.4 millimeter in and out and that's a nozzle width and that'll put a very subtle but clear texture on there and of course the top and the bottom still i feel like it needs more contact area that's a little bit rough so we're going to go back to the musgrave texture and we're going to oh let's change the intensity to two that's too much let's go 1.5 yeah that looks pretty good and that's lots of flat areas mm, let's uh oh let's just basically the way that this works at this point is you play with the settings and if they do what you want then you keep it. And if it doesn't, you try something else. What's Nabia do? I don't know. We'll turn it all the way down. Doesn't seem to do much. We'll turn it all the way up. Uh, doesn't seem to do much. We'll just put that back where it is. Dimension. Well, dimension is, is how big it is. So if I go two, oh, actually it's not. It's, it's how pocky it is. And I kind of like that the way that it is. Let's see. Let's go up to five for our dimension. Let's go up to 0.5 for our dimension. Ooh, 0.5 is fun, but not good for this one. So we'll do two. Yeah, I like two. Uh, lunaracity is at two, so if I crank it up to five, I'm not sure what's happening there. Just play with it, you know. Uh, that's good. That's good. Octaves, one octaves, five octaves. Kind of like five octaves. Okay, we'll leave it there. And there we go. We've remeshed this and we've displaced it, but now our mesh has ooh, so many polygons on it. So we're just going to really quickly add a decimate modifier and we're going to decimate it to 0.2 of its original. And if you'll see here, there we go. There, there's practically no difference to 0.2 on and 0.2 off, but it, it is 0.2 of the vertices that it had before. And uh, well, it's kind of hard to see like this, but it basically just took all those flat areas and smoothed them out a little bit. That way it's using less geometry and we can 3D print that without making our slicer choke and die. So there we go. That is how we add a little bit of interesting texture to a 3D model for 3D printing. This can be used in a lot of different ways. We could use this to add knurling or, or texturing to the side of something that you want to be able to hold on to and get a grip on. You just have to use a regular texture that you can displace with that. You could use this to, I don't know, put into comments what you think you could use this with. And I hope that this quick tip helps you in the future. Thanks for watching.